Hello and welcome to the Island Arts Centre Virtual Book Club. My name is Tony McCauley and I'm probably best known as the author of this book. And uh, like you, I'm staying at home, staying safe in order that we can all stay well. Of course, one of the challenges of this time is that we can't get out and about and it's going to be some time before we can return to our wonderful art centres such as the Island Art Centre in Lisbon. But in the meantime, while we're in lockdown, there's actually plenty of time, possibly more time than usual, to read. So during this period, we're opening the Virtual Book Club and uh, I'll be telling you more about that later. And also in this short introduction, I'll be reading a, a little bit to you from my latest book, uh, Belfast Gate, which is a novel set in contemporary Belfast. So anyway, what are you reading during lockdown? Uh, we'd be really interested to hear what books you're reading and what books you are recommending others to read uh, while we're all staying at home. So here's just a few examples I've thought of. You might be revisiting a classic like this, or maybe you've, you've never got to it. That would be a good one to try. Or another amazing classic like this. Love this book. Haven't read it in years. Or you could go for something like this, another classic. Uh, or if you're really, if you know, if you have plenty of time on your hands and uh, you, you're, you're really enthusiastic, you could go for a classic like this. And as you can see, I've got to about uh, a fifth of my way through it on this attempt. So that's another one you could try. Or if you like poetry, you could maybe go for something like this which I think is a wonderful anthology. Uh, or it, you, maybe you, you just want to take your mind to, into uh, you know, some fantastic adventure so you could go for a thriller like this one. Or maybe you're in a reflective mood, you want something inspirational, so you might uh, go for something like this to read during these times. Or maybe be inspired by you know, a great character from history, so you might plunge into, you know, this is quite a big one, you might plunge into an autobiography of someone like this. Um, personally speaking, I'm thinking about, should I revisit some of my all-time favourite books? This is one of my all-time favourite books, The Bridge Over the Drina set in Bosnia. Uh, or, this is another favourite of mine, I haven't read it in years, Might I might revisit this one, possibly. Or, maybe it's time to uh, be introduced to something that you've heard about that's really good. It's been on that pile in your library or beside your bedside table and you've never quite got round to it. Well, I'm really interested in this one. I think I will have a go at reading this. And I've actually just started, just started reading this one. Okay? So, just a few examples from my bookshelves uh, that might stimulate some ideas, but we're really keen to know what you are reading. So if in the comments below this on social media, uh, just uh, just tell us what are you reading and what would you recommend people to read and enjoy during lockdown. And what we're planning to do is we're planning to come together for our first virtual book club on Wednesday the 29th of April at 7pm on Zoom, which means We'll all be coming together, all on our screens, our computer screens together, and we will be telling each other what we're enjoying and what we would recommend to each other to read during lockdown. And um, if enough people are interested and we have enough enthusiasm for it, then we'll keep it going and we'll start to choose a book. And every couple of weeks, we'll have another virtual book club and we'll be discussing what you thought of, of the book. So that's the plan. And just to kick things off today, I thought I would read you a little section from uh, my latest book, which is Belfast Gate. And uh, just to tell you a little bit about what the story is, it's Belfast 2019. And despite more than 20 years of peace, scores of so-called peace walls continue to separate Catholic and Protestant neighbourhoods. Jean Beattie's grief turns to anger when the police refused to open the peace gate at the end of her street to allow her best friend's funeral procession through to her church on the other side of the wall. The gate remains closed because local youths are recreational rioting. Comforted by her friends, Roberta, Bridget and Patricia from the Cross Community Pensioners Club, Jean vows the peace gate will be opened. And so I'm going to read you a little section from Belfast Gate, which is about when the Cross Community Pensioners Club in West Belfast, they decide that they're going to start a campaign to get the Peace Gate open. 
Well, Bridget, says Jane, what are we going to do about this gate? Big Isabel's funeral was the last straw for me, answers Bridget. Yes, love, says Patricia, as wee Jack Surgeoner, that's the little Jack Russell, licks her cheek. Last night I told my lame if I still had my legs, I'd run straight out there now and start pulling it down with my bare hands. Bridget has known Patricia since the day she was born. In fact, Bridget delivered Patricia in the Royal Victoria Hospital, just down the road from here. Bridget delivered a sizable proportion of the residents of West Belfast, regardless of religion. We all arrive into this world the same, she would often say, in response to the latest news of intolerance in her city or in distant lands. And we all leave the same way too. So there's no need for all the unkindness and cruelty in between. It's not as simple as going outside and taking the wall down with your bare hands, Patricia, she points out. A lot of people are scared of the peace gate opening, so they are. They feel safer with the walls. They think it protects them. Them wee lads out there, says Jean, don't remember what it was like round here before them walls went up. Sure, we lived in the same streets round here, and there were some prods on the falls and some Catholics on the shankle, and no one never even bothered. Bridget points at her head. It's the walls in here that need to come down first, she says. All the women nod at Bridget's wisdom. At 89, she is the oldest and wisest retired midwife in West Belfast. Bridget's mother died at the age of 99, and so the women regularly predict, our Bridget will see a hundred, so she will. Jean and Roberta sit down at the table as Bridget pours yet more tea and the tray bake supply gradually diminishes. Once she has settled herself, Jean decides that she has something to say. Right, girls, she says. My Derek always told me to keep your head down if you want a quiet life in this country. Aye, my lane's the same, says Patricia. Whatever you say, say nothing and you'll have no trouble. But where has keeping my head down got me, asks Jean. My own family don't want to live here no more, even though there's peace now. Jean's announcement indicates that the meeting has commenced and Bridget sits down at the table with the other women to consider the serious business of the day. Oh, I know, says Bridget with a slight wince as her arthritic hip catches in the seated position. All my boys across the water are the same. No intention of coming back here. Mommy, you know we love you and Belfast is our home, but we're thinking of the children, they say. So much for our so-called peace dividend. Is that like when you used to get your co-op dividend down in York Street? asked Roberta. Jean resists the temptation to ex- Jean resists the temptation to attempt an explanation. My Bernadette didn't leave Ireland, says Patricia. She married a wee Scotch fella, and he's a Protestant teacher in Macrofelt, and they never come next nor near West Belfast neither. Well at least my knave still visits me. Bridget interjects with a slight haughtiness. Sure, your knave married that wee foreign doctor and they moved to South Africa, adds Patricia. You only see them every couple of years. i right enough, Bridget, says Roberta. He was a lovely wee Indian fella from like one of them Bollywood movies. Aye, says Patricia, but he got fed up here being asked whether he was a Catholic Muslim or a Protestant Muslim. Bridget casts disapproving stirs around the room. Bridget likes her privacy, and this is sensitive territory. An air of tension rises between the old friends. After a moment's silence, broken only by the slight tinkle of shaking cups and saucers in elderly hands, everyone knows it's time to change the subject. Well, I'll tell you what, girls, and I'll tell you the truth, and I'll tell it to you for nothing, says Jean. I've kept my head down long enough in this bloody place. Are we going to be living behind these gates and walls forever? Aye, says Roberta, they knocked down that big wall in Berlin ages ago. Kylie was still a neighbour, so she was. And now that old rep Trump is building another big wall to keep all the Mexican terrorists from doing another 5-Eleven in America. And sure, there's been no trouble at half the gates for ages anyway, adds Patricia. And the only reason that children come to the wall to throw stones is because there's a wall to try to get your stone over. It causes the trouble, 
instead of stopping it, says Bridget. She looks around the table at her friends. Bridget knows these women so well. She knows all their ups and downs, their joys and sorrows. She has listened to the stories of money troubles, lost babies, bereavements and health scares. In this very room, the women completed a host of adult education courses on everything from flower arranging to human rights. Bridget has sat around this table with the same group of women to discuss traffic calming, schools closing, parades, riots, antisocial behaviour and dog boo. It would be a brave or foolish man who tried to patronise this group of women, she thinks. Bridget knows just how tough the women of West Belfast can be. I think we should start a campaign, says Bridget. A wee campaign to get the gate open, at least during the day, before the wee hoods get out of bed and come out for a riot. Brilliant, Bridget, Jean says enthusiastically. Where would we be without your brains, love? Our Bridget's no dozer, smiles Roberta. I'm up for that, affirms Patricia, her large brown eyes widening at the wonder of the idea. Come on, my girls, we'll call the campaign Get Our Gate Open. That's the G-O-G-O campaign, laughs Bridget. The Go-Go campaign. Oh, here, exclaims Jean. That means we're the Go-Go girls. The women laugh together for a while before becoming suddenly quiet and thoughtful. It feels as if they're being called together on an adventure for the sake of a better future. I'm scared, says Roberta soberly. You know what some of them are like round here, and they're still the paramilitaries and all. Oh, I know all about them, love, says Bridget. I delivered most of them in the royal. She pauses, looks at her friends intently and adds, if we do this, girls, you have to remember there will be no turning back. Our old lags will, will be over, I promise you. I'll go straight out there myself right now, says Patricia, and start a protest. And I'll ring Stephen Nolan on the BBC and we'll see if anyone tries to stop me. But Roberta's having doubts. What difference could a group of old dolls like us make, she asks. What do you think, Jean? Jean pauses for a moment before standing up slowly. She straightens her aching back and speaks. Bridget's right, she begins. There'll be no turning back. But are we just going to sit here and drink cups of tea like we old ladies for the rest of our lives? Oh, Jean, cries Roberta. Are you saying we should, like, folly our dreams? Like, like Susan Boyle? Patricia bangs her fist on the table and shouts, well, I want to be a go-go girl. Wee Jack stands up in Patricia's lap and his tail wags around in circles as fast as a helicopter blade. Bridget stands up and announces, and I'm going to be a go-go girl. Roberta stands up and follows with her declaration. When I was young, I always wanted to be a go-go girl. For a second, the women look at Roberta in confusion. So we are the go-go girls, proclaims Jean, and we are not keeping our heads down no more. Yes, says Patricia, it's girl power. We're like the Spice Girls, but with bad hips. The women applaud as Jean continues. We are going to get that gate opened every day. We are going to make this road a safer place, a better place for all of us. Wee Jack is barking enthusiastically now. Roberta cannot contain her admiration. Oh, Jean, she says, you'll be our leader, won't you? you? You'll be like your woman, Angela Merkel, in Germany. Altogether, girls, get our gate open, leads Patricia with a rhythmic thump of protest on the wooden table. The women begin to bang the table with teaspoons and in unison they chant together, get our gate open, get our gate open. The banging on the table shakes loose crumbs from the tray. Bake, the tray bakes onto the saucers and the teacups seem to shiver in the midst of their resolute vibrations. So that's a wee bit from one of the early chapters of Belfast Gate. Hope you enjoyed that little introduction to my latest book. Um, just to remind you 
the virtual book club. Uh, we want to hear what you're reading during lockdown. We want to hear what you would suggest for others to be reading right in the comments beneath this video. And remember, we're going to have our first virtual book club where we're going to be discussing what you're reading. We're going to do that live on Zoom on Wednesday, the 29th of April at 7 p.m. I look forward to talking to you again then at the Island Arts Centre Virtual Book Club. Book club. Until then, stay home, stay well, and stay positive. Bye-bye.